After studying this module, you shall be able to understand what is cognitive psychology. Uh, you will be able to describe different approaches through which cognitive psychology could be better understood. We will also explain about historical background which is involved in cognitive psychology and you will also understand the current scenarios of co cognitive psychology which are involved. So basically cognitive psychology is referred as the study of human and uh, human mental processes and their role in thinking, feeling and the behavior of humans. The core focus of cognitive psychology is on perception, thinking and acquisition of knowledge, uh, judgment, comprehension and production of language, problem solving and decision making. This branch of psychology came to life during the fall of behaviorism and with the help of new technology, aspirations and application of uh, abstract concepts and neuroscience. The cognitive approach has uh, Contemporary psychology which is with its scientific uh, representations of the complex of human psyche and has provided the opportunity to apply this knowledge in the treatment of human diseases and dysfunctions which was given by Einstein in 2004. Let's start, uh, define cognitive psychology. Cognitive psychology uh, concerns with the scientific understanding of how people may perceive, understand, evaluate and think in relation to the complexities and uh, significance of mind. The focus of cognitive psychology has always been to assess the science of mental life. Cognitive psychology exerts a strong influence on psychology as a whole and its more inclusive partner of co uh, is the cognitive science, which is unified, which involves a unified program for studying the mind. Mind is the process of information from our senses and helps in understanding transmitting the information to others if we would suppose to understand what mind is all about. Consider if this processing is not allowed then the information may be processed in meaning um, information may not be pro uh, processed in meaningful ways. For, ex for example a child who uh, uh, struggles in school because of impairment in ability to fluently read the English text a disorder called dyslexia. It is a learning disorder that does not allow transforming uh, printed characters into meaningful uh, pieces of information as uh, you can relate with a, a movie called Tare Zameenpe where the child had dyslexia. Cognitive psychologists measure the behaviors in laboratory in order to uh, reach conclusions about the covert mental processes. Therefore, experimental method is the heart of cognitive psychology. The main of co uh, goal of cognitive psychology has always been to explain how humans transform input into thoughts and actions by the complex and often mysterious processes of cognition. Thus human psychology may not be possible to understand without focusing on cognitive psychology. Um, as with the use of compu co uh, computation, uh, computational metaphors, uh, cognitive psychology greatly in, uh, benefited in its research domain by the work in, in the area of artificial intelligence and also other related areas in the 1960s and 1970s. This further led to the development of another subject for study is a study of cognitive science which basically um, attempts to integrate a range of approaches in research on the mind and mental processes. The key milestones in the development of cognitive psychology would also help us in understanding major course of journey uh, through which cognitive psychology have gone through. It would also help us in understanding its uh, crumb, uh, crumbling behaviorism, computer metaphors and information processing with that of abstract intelligence which is involved in that uh, and different schools of thoughts which are playing a role out here. So let's focus our attention on approaches of cognitive psychology. First approach is information processing approach. It is a way by which the information from the environment is processed by a series of stages or processing systems. For example, when a stimulus is presented, our basic perceptual processes occur, which is further followed by attentional processes. The information which has been the focus through our attentional processes gets transferred to a short-term memory. This information is further transferred to the long-term memory. 
which is through perception, attention and memory. This model has been used by cognitive psychologists since decades as it makes sense and is easy to understand. These assumptions of uh, three, there are three assumptions of information processing approach. First is cognition can be understood by analyzing it into series of sequential stages with the help of processing systems. Second, the system alters the incoming information which can lead to unique processing in each stage. Uh, to better understand it, let's take an example. At the perceptual stage, coding of information takes place. In the memory stage, recall of information which further enhances our concept of uh, concept formation which could be your judgment also. The goal of this model is to specify the processes and structures since each component is related to the next stage. Therefore, it becomes difficult to identify which stage comes at an initial level. There is, a, there is also a very crucial limitation towards this approach. We have understood what this approach is all about but there is a, a limitation also which is attached uh, to information processing approach. It has been observed that processing is often affected substantially by the individual's past experiences and its expectations. Therefore, the stimuli intrude the organism that is inactive or either not prepared to process the incoming information. There are different ways by which we can investigate cognitive psychology. They are termed as traditional ways of, to obtain evidence about human cognition. These include experimental cognitive psychology, cognitive neuropsychology and cognitive neuroscience. These we will focus on later on this um, in this module. Cognitive psychology is investigated in several ways. For one of them is experimental cognitive psychology. Experimental methods that measure the behaviors have all, uh, always been the backbone of cognitive psychology. If we measure the behavior of humans, it can explain us about the cognitive processes which are involved in it. In a true experiment, a researcher manipulates a variable in order to see what effect it has on, the, uh, on another variable. So it's basically um, manipulation of one variable and response which, a per, which an individual would be giving to that stimulus is, your, uh, is an effect which is there on the second variable. Uh, next is the physiological methods or cognitive neuropsychology. Besides measuring the behavior of individuals, physiological measures are also very important. Bodily systems such as brain activity, eye movements, blood pressure and heart rate are also very important aspects um, and they are basically very important indicators which are also being used in experiments to understand the cognitive processes. Some of the methods which are relevant in understanding it are uh, EEG, neuroimaging and brain lesions. EEG is a multi-channel uh, multi recording of the continuous electrical activity of the brain. It is measured with the multi-channel recorder that basically detects the voltage changes generated by the large number of neurons below each of many electrodes placed on the scalp. Now what is neuroimaging? Neuroimaging begins where EEG is not able to help in specifying the exact locations. Neuroimaging measures the location of neuron activity generated during a cognitive task. There are different techniques which may be provided which can provide an indirect measure of more localized brain activity as compared with electro, uh, electrical scalp recording. Um, magnetic uh, resonance imaging that is MRI is a strong magnetic pulse and moves molecules to the brain in the brain. Motion of these molecules are picked up as radio frequencies and reconstructed in 3G images. So MRI has better resolution than CT scans. Uh, there is another uh, method by which we can get it done is through PET scans. It is a method increased uh, radio labeled glucose activities in scan is scanned in the brain while subjects engage in different cognitive processes. Spatial resolution is seen to be good whereas temporal resolutions are not at a better side. Uh, third technique for assessment of localized area is through 
functional magnetic resonance imaging that is fmri it helps to detect changes in blood flow to particular areas of the brain when their areas are active it provides both an anatomical and functional view of the brain uh, ne uh, the other thing which is very important out here is the brain lesions it is the oldest method of studying the functions of the brain to examine individuals who have suffered damage to the brain tissue through accidents strokes and uh, uh, diseases of the brain such as alzheimer's and parkinson's disease lesions provide another way to study the cognitive functions served by the brain it was not until uh, world war ii that physicians started to document disorders that were caused by damage to certain regions of the brain which brain region engages in what kind of cognitive function this really helped in understanding the exact cause of dysfunctions next model is the connectionist model an alternative approach to the more traditional information processing approach is the connectionism it is indeed to capture the fundamental cognitive processes as they might be instigated by brain Neurons are the elementary units of the brain which are further inter interconnected with each other uh, which eat other neurons in the brain. Connectionist networks are the models of neural network as they might exist in the brain. The two basic connectionist ideas are that information can be broken down into elementary units or neurons and that there are connections between these neurons. They can be of different strengths which can further be divided or modified into units. The connection is, connection is only possible if both the neurons are firing at the same time. And another uh, assumption of connectionist uh, model is that many connections can be achieved at the same time. It is, uh, this is a clear example of parallel processing as opposed to serial processing. Now, Let's tr uh, try and understand from where cognitive psychology emerged, that is the history of cognitive psychology. Let's start with the early cognitive research. Early cognitive research, experiments in cognitive psychology were being carried out over a century ago. Philosophers were also keen, uh, also um, showing keen interest in cognitive processes, but until late 19th century only that first attempts were made to bring cognitive processes into the laboratory. This helped to in studying these concepts in the light of scientific stream. Important discoveries emerged especially in the field of perception and attention, which was given by Wundt in 1874, memory by Ebengoss in 1855, 1885, and learning and Thondi by 1914. The work carried out at this era were mainly focusing on basic cognitive processes which in turn led to the development of theories and experimental design of today. It was seen that the research carried out during that time could be applied to real life settings also, but their main purpose of their research was not meant to do this. For example, Eben Goss in 1885 carried out experiments on space learning and mass learning, where it, were, uh, where it was shown, where it was shown that through experiment that learning can be improved if some rest is provided. It leads to less fatigue and better concentration. This became widely used strategy to improve the efficiency of learning. However, cognitive researchers were mostly concerned with pure research and any practical application were considered, considered to be largely incidental out there. Um, you, we can also understand by the work of Bartlett in 1932 challenged this approach of cognitive psychology and argued that cognitive researchers should focus on the relevance of the real world also rather than just the pure research work. He further suggested that cognitive researchers should make use of more naturalistic settings or experimental designs and test those materials which are based on situations or events which resemble real life um, situations. He contributed his thought by using pictures and stories in the research work of memory, such as the testimony of courtroom witnesses, which we, will, which we have discussed in other modules, and also through research had a lasting impact in the stream of cognitive psychology. That was basically 
an era of early cognitive research. Now let's come to the uh, post-war development of cognitive psychology. The modern era of cognitive psychology started due to World War II. The war produced major changes in the technology side and extraordinary efforts from humans to, do, to deal with these changes. Therefore, introduction of new or advanced equipments made the need to understand the capa uh, capabilities and limitations of human uh, operators more important. A new goal emerged to assess the performance and attention of humans and also led to the development of artificial intelligence during this phase. A British psychologist uh, called Donald uh, Broadband, who was a pi uh, pilot trainer during the war and therefore had a first-hand experience of the cognitive problems uh, encountered at that time by most of the photo uh, pilots uh, was being referred as a new wave of applied res uh, research. Broadband in 1958 basically became more interested in exploring the information processing capabilities of human beings, the abilities to deal with two or more um, competing perceptual inputs faced by humans simultaneously were especially focused on. To investigate further on this, he established a technique to assess uh, the basic limitation of human attention and he was able to apply his findings to assisting the performance of the pilots. Uh, the year 1956 was also and cr very critical in the development of cognitive uh, psychology. According to Anderson in 1995, cognitive psychology first emerged in the two decades between 1950 and 1970. The first of artificial intelligence was founded by 1956 by Chomsky. It was this year which witnessed the emergence of both cognitive psychology and cognitive science. Um, in 1967 also, uh, cognitive psychology was first used by American psychologist Ulrich Neisser in his book called Cognitive Psychology. Neisser was the father of cognitive psychology and an advocate of ecological approaches to cognitive research. According to Neisser, cognition involves all processes by which the sensory input is transformed, reduced, elaborated stored, recovered and used further on. It is concerned with, the, with these processes even when they operate in the absence of relevant stimulation as in images and hallucinations. Thus, it is apparent that all psychological phenomena are related to cognitive aspects. Nicer always described cognitive psychology as an assault of behaviorism. He was very uncomfortable with the behaviorism because he considered behaviorist assumption wrong and because those assumptions limited what psychologists could study. Psychophysics, structuralism, functionalism and behaviorism all contributed in some way or the other in the development of cognitions. They had their own strengths and limitations or weaknesses. Uh, one of the major schools of psychology that had major impact on cognitive psychology was behaviorism. So let's try and understand what behaviorism was focusing on. The work of Pavlov, Skinner and Watson contributed a lot in the growth of this area since 1930s uh, to 1960s. Watson focused more on observable behavior and was keen to more psychological research and laboratory into the real world. He disliked the approach of introspection and functionalist approach um, and recommended that thoughts, feelings uh, must be dropped from study of psychology as they are not directly observed. He was very much interested in how people react in everyday life and what can influence them. The main focus of psychology should be scientific and objective and by this they meant that the subject matter could be publicly observable. Therefore, the emphasis of psychology should be on scientific basis rather than just merely subjective views. On the other hand, Skinner was focusing on the relationship of stimuli, response and reinforcement as its crucial issues of psychology. He basically focused on uh, schedules of reinforcement. Another, uh, there is a limitation of uh, on this um, aspect also. Uh, one was uh, given by Chomsky 
that uh, he had basically uh, given another limitation for behaviorism was the failure to consider intervening mental processes. Behaviorists were basically focusing on the stimulus response relationship. On the other hand, cognitive psychology was addressing the mental processes which are attached to any stimulus. Let's try and understand now what structuralism was dealing with. Structuralism described the components of consciousness which were aimed to describe the elemental components such as sensation, images and feelings. According to this school of thought, consciousness was considered to be the uh, proper subject matter of psychology and all other things are to be ignored in this. The central problem with this method of course is that it is subjective, perception of the same visual stimulus might be different from person to person. Tichner, the student of Wind, Wundt, uh, advanced his research structuralism. He intended to determine basic building blocks of human experiences. Now let's come to what functionalism was dealing with. Functionalism was a philosophy opposing the prevailing structuralism of psychology of the late 19th century. One of the major proponents of functionalism was Thorndike who has been ever popular for puzzle box. He was considered to study the primary issues of uh, functionalism. This school of thought also focused on observable events as opposed to unobservable events. Now um, we are coming to new milestones in the development of cognitive psychology. We have discussed about earlier cognitive psychology post war and now the new milestones which are there which we should focus on. Um, we had also said that World War II had brought about many changes in understanding human behavior and human psychology. From there only there, the emergence of computer metaphors has emerged. The remarkable upsurge of research interest in cognition has been acclaimed as a uh, revolution in the 20th century of psychology. This led to the development of digital computers which offered psychologists both a plausible metaphor that is the mind as a com computational system and a new method for the investigation of the mind. So this was considered to be a new way of assessing human mind. Computers are terms as, as the physical symbol system which is further capable of having and manipulating symbols. This metaphor became a composite of characteristics shared by humankind and machine. As a result, Q, uh, computer became the heart for cognitive psychology. Artificial intelligence was also uh, one of them. Um, machines or programs which are using intelligence to solve problems, complex problems are in the same manner as humans use in solving problems. Examples would be computers doing uh, medical diagnosis, flying jet planes, playing chess etc. And artificial intelligence involves making programs, devices that are efficient, flexible and learn thought experiences. Therefore, artificial intelligence offered a glimpse into how we can infer the existence of unobservable processes based on the product of behavior. So let's uh, try and summarize what we have done, uh, what we have studied in this module. You have studied about what cognitive psychology is. It is basically therefore as a study of human mind, mental processes and therefore plays an important role in thinking, feelings and, of, uh, and behavior of humans. The information processing model was also um, understood out here where it played a very dominant role in cognitive psychology. Uh, we had also discussed about parallel distributed processing approach in cognition in which information is processed uh, in a similar way to neurological networks. It was also seen that cognitive psychology has a relatively, relatively long history and continues to make many, con uh, many connections with other disciplines and other disciplines also. The introduction of the word cognitive psychology was uh, came with the publication of a book in 1967 by American psychologist uh, Ulrich Neisser. He critically opposed the work of behaviorist and different schools of psychology had basically shared about the impact on cognitive psychology at that time where behaviorism, structuralism, functionalism uh, had equally uh, discussed about what cognitive psychology should focus on who all tried and explained what all needs to be focused on cognitive psychology. The neurocognitive revolution influenced by modern developments in communication and computer technologies were also seen in this module.